Good morning and welcome again to our morning devotion insight. This morning I want to share with you God's timing, not ours. God's timing, not ours. And uh, my text is found in 1 Samuel chapter 24 and verse 10. You know, if you have time, just go and read this whole chapter. You know, some urged me to kill you, but I said, I will not lay my hand on the Lord's anointed. You know, 1 Samuel 16 records the story of Samuel anointing David to be king, the Lord's anointed. And yet Saul also is God's anointed. So you see, there are two kings here. One is Saul, who is the present king. And there is also David, who is the anointed king, king to be. Now, we find David running for his life from Saul. A little bit of a background. Uh, king was, uh, so David was running away or running for his life from Saul, who is jealous. Saul was jealous. Saul was thinking that, you know, maybe one day David is going to take over my throne. Uh, David is going to be king. So what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? And so he was so consumed with jealousy that he actually wanted to kill David. So David is an obvious threat to Saul's throne. And Saul has decided that the only way to deal with this threat is to eliminate it. So to Saul is that the only way to deal with this problem is to get rid of David. So in today, in, as we look at these verses, Saul enters a cave uh, where David and his men are hidden. So but by cutting off a piece of Saul's robe while the king doesn't notice, David proves that he could easily have taken Saul's life. David could have easily taken Saul's life. Uh, in fact, all his mighty men said, kill him. You know, kill him. Get rid of him. He's the one that's pursuing you. He's the one that is attacking you. He's the one that is, you know, making your life miserable, making you a fugitive. But David regrets even this action against Saul. He said no. Even by cutting a little bit, a little piece of Saul's robe, not even Saul's life, just a little bit, a piece of cloth, David says, I regret doing that. So some urge me to kill you, but I spared you because you are the Lord's anointed. David says, those words prompt Saul to drop his pursuit of David for a time being. You know, so but if David knows he also is the Lord's anointed, why not think that perhaps God placed Saul in the cave so that David could take Saul's life and hurry up the process of becoming the next king? You know, some people say, hey, you know, it's an opportunity. It's, in fact, a great opportunity. You know, such an opportunity you can't find. He's in the cave. You can just get rid of him, kill him. Because confidence in being the Lord's anointed means trusting God's timing, not one's own timing. I want to say it again. Because David was confident in knowing that he is the Lord's anointed. That means... He trusts God's timing and not his own. So sometimes in life too, we want to what? In life, we often challenge to trust God's, you know, we are all, all the time asking God, when, uh, why, why so slow? You know, why don't hurry up? Why don't uh, do, do something, God? You know, change this and make it happen or whatever. We want something now, but God seems to be in no hurry. We want something now, but God seems to be in no hurry. So our impatience needs to be shaped by trust in God's power and God's schedule or timetable. Let's learn to go by God's timing, not ours. You know, sometimes some people may have hurt you. Some people may say, you know, what if it would be good if this person would... I mean, we can have so many things that go through our minds, you know, and we thought that that would be the best time, that would be the best way, that would be ideal, that would solve the problem, but it's not. So we learn from the life of David that he was not only obedient, but he feared God. He waited for God's timing. He was confidently knowing that God has the best time for all things. You know, some, some people hurt me, you know, some people did evil to me, you know, then the Bible says, you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. 
Uh, so we don't take vengeance upon our own hands. You know, some people talk bad about me. Some people slander me. Some people are bad mouthed. So let God be the one who will do do His work and do His dealing. Uh, so our part is that God's timing, not ours. Maybe sometimes it could be a job. It could it could be a relationship. It could be you know maybe getting married. It could be buying a house. It could be. Anything, it could be going overseas, it could be uh, migrating, or whatever it is. Just allow God to have His timing in your life, in my life, and not ours. Alright, so let's just pray this morning. Dear God, please deepen my trust in your timing and your purposes. When I'm anxious, which most time we will, help me to lean into you and not run ahead of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us lean unto God. Trust Him for His best timing. Don't run ahead of God. Right? Amen. And learn to say God, God's timing, not mine. Amen. And have a great day.